Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Estimates show first round MAS victory in Bolivian presidential polls as protests continue despite emergency Thai police pursued digital crackdown. Chile witnesses massive demonstrations marking one year of mass movement. International bodies condemn Israel, Israel's move to further expand illegal settlements. And pro Turkey candidate wins shock presidential victory in northern Cyprus. In our first story, Evo Morales party, the Movement for Socialism, claimed victory in Bolivia's presidential elections as both two private pollsters and the president of Bolivia's coup regime confirmed that the MAS ticket was set to win in the first round itself. Early on Monday, an exit poll by the Jubilee Foundation indicated that the MAS ticket of Luis Arce and David Chakawanka was expected to get nearly 53% of the vote. Earlier, the Unitel C.S. Mori estimate showed that Luis Arce received around 52.4% of the vote, while his nearest rival Carlos Mesa was shown as obtaining 31.5% of the vote. Shortly after, the president of the coup regime, Jean Inanes, in a tweet said that available information also pointed to the victory of the Luis Arce and David Chakravonka ticket. On Monday, the Secretary General of the Organization of American States, Luis Almagro, also congratulated Arce and David Chakravonka. The OAS was instrumental in the coup that overthrew Evo Morales last year when it questioned the initial results in the elections that took place in October. The final tally of this year's results, however, is proceeding slowly and is expected to take a couple of days to come out. According to Bolivia's election laws, in order for a candidate to win in the first round, they must either secure more than 50% of the vote or more than 40% with a 10% lead over their nearest rival. Prior to the release of the Unitel CS Mori estimate, Former President Evo Morales of the MAS said that the party's own internal tabulation mechanism showed that it had won the presidential election as well as both houses of parliament. Luis Arce was a Minister of Economy and Public Finance in the Evo Morales administration. After the estimate by the pollster, Morales tweeted that the will of the people had won and that to quote, we are going to return dignity and freedom to the people. The election on Sunday was the first since the violent coup which was followed by massive persecution of the MAS, its members and sympathizers last year and this year. Voting in Sunday's election was largely peaceful and was marked by a high turnout. In the days preceding the elections, there was a huge amount of uncertainty about whether free and fair elections would be permitted and if the results would be recognized. On the day before the elections, the DIREPRE preliminary result system was suspended and an armed mobilization had taken place outside La Paz. After polling closed, there was some confusion as the Unitel CS Mori estimate was delayed and there was a marked lack of transparency. The election observation delegation by Code Pink spoke to the media expressing their concern and calling for greater clarity and openness in the process. When the results did come out from the pollsters, it was greeted by celebration by Bolivians and progressive sections throughout the world. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro tweeted that the people of Bolivia had with their votes defeated the coup that overthrew Evo Morales. The President and Vice President of Argentina, Alberto Fernandez and Cristina Fernandez also congratulated the MAS candidates. Former President of Honduras, Manuel Zelaya, who was himself overthrown in a coup in 2019, also congratulated the people of Bolivia for beating the coup and the fraud. In our next story on Monday, Thailand's police announced a probe into four media outlets covering the ongoing anti-government protests, thus launching a massive digital crackdown. The order sanctioned by the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society will be con conducted against four media outlets. These are Prachatai, The Reporters, Voice TV and The Standard, along with the pro-protest page Free Youth. The order will also include a probe into more than 300,000 URLs on social media and other digital platforms that the police have identified to be in violation of Thai laws. The Digital Ministry has also announced on Monday that it will seek a court order to block all the four media groups along with Free Youth and the Identify URLs. These moves by the police have prompted criticisms of the government of Prime Minister Prayut chan who has been accused of stifling press freedoms in the country. Prachatai posted a probe order over Twitter taking it as a matter of credit to its reporting on Thailand. The military-supported government had declared a state of emergency last week in a bid to end the protests that have been raging on for three months. The recent crackdown on digital media outlets and social media pages are part of the emergency measures imposed by the government. Despite the police crackdown, the protests have continued unabated. On Sunday, massive protests were witnessed across the national capital. The police estimates of the number of protesters show over 20,000 people participating in various demonstrations in Bangkok. We now go to Chile, where thousands gathered around the Dignity Square in the capital city, Santiago, on Sunday to mark one year of the country's popular uprising. The demonstrations took place despite massive deployment of the Chilean police who were called the Carabineros. 
40,000 carabineros were deployed across several areas of Santiago. The police tried to disperse the demonstrators with water, cannons and tear gas. Reporters on the ground also said that unidentified persons were present in the crowd who made use of chemical irritants. Sunday's demonstrations were organized just a few days ahead of the upcoming constitutional referendum on October 25th. Chile will be voting on whether or not they want a change in their current constitution. The current constitution called the Magna Carta was written and imposed during the dictatorship of General Augusto Pinochet. Chilean social movements believe that this constitution has created the foundation for the rampant inequality and neoliberal economic system in the country. The inequalities have worsened under the current regime of Chilean President Sebastian Piñera. The demand for a new constitution emerged from the popular struggle that began a year ago. The uprising was sparked by a high school student's protest against the increase in the cost of public transportation services in the capital. On October 11th, high school students began refusing to buy metro tickets en masse and jumped the turnstiles to protest the hike. This innovative resistance led to the Chilean youth serving as a catalyst for awakening the long-standing discontent in the country. Since October 18th of last year, these protesters have transformed into a demonstration against the austerity and anti-people policies pursued by Pinochet, introduced by Pinochet and intensified by Piñera. The levels of repression against protesters during this uprising has been unprecedented. At least 30 people were killed in protests last year and thousands were injured. In our next story, the recent Israeli announcement to significantly expand its illegal settlement construction in the occupied West Bank has been strongly condemned. Those condemning this move include the European Union, the United Nations and the Arab League. They have expressed deep concern over the decision to approve over 4,900 new settler homes. The statements by these organizations said that the decision will undermine and completely destroy the two-state solution and jeopardize the establishment of a viable independent Palestinian state. Israel plans to proceed with the construction of almost 5,000 illegal settler homes. The move was halted some months ago at the insistence of US President Donald Trump as part of the Arab-Israeli normalization deal. The total number of new settler homes in occupied Palestine which have been approved this year will be more than 12,150, according to the settlement watchdog Peace Now. This is the highest since 2012 when it started tracking the illegal construction. On Friday, a joint statement from the foreign ministers of Britain, France, Germany, Italy and Spain said that the Israeli decision to expand its illegal settlements violates international law and further imperils the viability of a two-state solution to bring about a just and lasting peace to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The UN and the Arab League also joined with the EU in denouncing the Israeli announcement. And finally, on Sunday, an ally of Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Ersin Tatar, has won the presidential election in the separatist state of Northern Cyprus. The head of the electoral board was quoted as saying that Tatar received 51.74% of the vote, defeating incumbent President Social Democrat Mustafa Akinci. Akinci had received 48.26% of the vote. Total voter, voter turnout in the election was 67.3%. Tatar is an ultra-nationalist right-wing political leader who supports a two-state solution in Cyprus. This involves dividing the country on ethnic lines on the basis of two, two, two communities, that is the Turkish Cypriot and the Greek Cypriot communities. On the other hand, 72-year-old Akinci, Akinci, who was widely expected to win, was a supporter of a unified, united federal Cypriot state and opposed Turkish influence and interference in Cyprus. Following his unexpected victory, Tatar in a speech to a celebrate said that they would never tear the ties between us and Turkey. And this is a direct quote. He also expressed gratitude to Turkey for always standing by their side. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. <laughs>